everyone should get VR4 gallons and legnams because these things are sick uh, and they are underrepresented in the JDM car community. Uh, they deserve a lot more recognition than they've got. This car still is one for that niche kind of market, uh, but that makes it even more special. It's kind of like our little secret. Um, and I know that since I released those two, two or three gallon videos, uh, I've gained a, quite a few more subscribers. So it, it does show that there's a, there's a bunch of us out there that still love this thing, you know? And we're not gonna let the world forget the uh, VR4 legacy. Yo, what is up guys? We did it. We finally made it to a thousand subscribers. It's been a long journey, but we got there in the end. Uh, and in order to celebrate, here's a video of me driving the Gallant through the hills and talking about it. Today, we are going to be talking about my first and initial impressions on the Gallant VR4. Uh, now, I know this isn't the first drive, uh, but I have barely driven this thing um, ever since I bought it. The only real trip I've done is that mountain cruise video, and uh, I didn't actually really talk about my experience um, with the car. So, this is about as good as it'll get in terms of a first drive video. I've had this car for about a, a few months now, barely driven it though, Let's start with appearance. This thing looks insane, in my opinion. It's so sleek, it's so aggressive, it's really muscular, um, and in my eyes, it's one of the best looking sedans out there. Uh, I love this color. It's actually the same color that's on my uh, dad's Mitsubishi Challenger, which was also imported from Japan. Next up, let me talk about the cluster. Like, I don't know if you guys can see this thing that well, but like the headlights aren't on and it is illuminated like this. I think it is stunning. So the needles are illuminated, as you can see, a bright red, and we've got a really nice clean white for the rest of the cluster. Um, and it just, it's so aesthetically pleasing to look at. Um, and it, it's one of those little things that uh, add a lot of value. To the experience. The pedal spacing in this car is questionable uh, in my opinion um, and that's because I come from the Integra which has a really nice setup and it is perfect for heel towing. Now I get that this car is intended to be more of like a, a cruiser, a luxury sedan, um, so the accelerator is in a kind of weird spot and you, you really have to kind of stretch to do a clean heel tow and you know chances are Chances are, I'm just not used to it yet, but I have driven this a few times and I can tell you it's not not the easiest thing to heel toe in. Um, but, you know, that's me coming from an Integra, which was kind of a purpose-built uh, sports car for all intents and purposes. Next up, the size. I, I started off in an Astra and then I moved to the Integra. So these cars are tiny, they're lightweight and they're small. This thing is Pig. Um, it is. It's really long. I've found so it, it's actually uh, a tight fit in my garage, and I've never had that issue before. Even my um, my parents' uh, Volvos and the Mitsubishi Challenger. None of them uh, are as long as this thing. Um, so yeah, that's something I found interesting. Uh, this is meant to be that sleek highway cruiser. Um, so yeah, it's long, it's sleek, but it is a big car. There's no denying that. But for a large sedan, it is incredible. Uh, and I'm not lying when I say that. I've driven, you know, my dad's Volvo uh, and a few other boatier kind of sedans. And this is not one of them. Um, and that could be due to the fact that it's got coilovers, but I'd imagine even without the coilovers, it's still, uh, relatively nimble compared to some other sedans out there and uh, it's you know it's 1460 kilos so this is the lightest version you can get uh, when it comes to the VR4s it's a gallant it's type B it doesn't have AYC or anything like that it's as light as it's gonna get so that may factor into it that being said this thing does weigh about 360 kilos more than the Integra and 
you know, going through corners, you definitely feel that. It still is a 20 year old Japanese car, which means you get that kind of raw experience that you're missing out on when you go into modern luxury cruisers, uh, which have a lot of power behind them, but not a lot of the excitement. It doesn't feel like you're just floating on a, cr a cloud. It feels like you're really driving the car. All right, now to the good stuff, speed. <laughs> this thing is fast um, and I know that might not mean a lot coming from someone who's driven a Honda Integra NA 1.8 litre for the past four or five years but the way this thing builds speed is incredible to me you drop a gear you're in boost already you put your foot down and it just Put your foot down, the gallon says, hey, I'm ready to boogie, let's do this. And that's that. There's no turbo lag, you're not waiting for a boost to hit, um, and you've just got power when you want it. It's a lot faster than uh, most of the cars I've driven, and it's perfect for the streets in my opinion. It just gets up and it goes. So it's fast, it's still fast, it's still incredibly fun. Um, but one of the most intriguing things about this car is the fact that it is a small V6 with a twin turbo setup. Uh, what this means is the way it builds boost is almost instant. Uh, there's hardly any lag at all. Uh, and that's because the turbos are small. If you want power, you've got it. Um, it just, like, you put your foot down and you just, oh, my God. You're just pushed straight back into your seat and you're off. This thing is ready to boogie when you need it to. The one downfall of this setup is that you're not running two big turbos, meaning you don't have an incredible amount of boost at the top end. So I got to drive Leander's Evo, which runs the four-cylinder uh, single turbo setup, the 4G63 with the turbo on it. And that thing builds boost in a completely different way. You haven't got much down low, but when you're at the top, it is so visceral and violent. Um, and this thing is not like that at all. Uh, it's a completely different kind of experience. It's a little more mature in its delivery, I guess. Uh, I love it, but I do think I prefer a bigger turbo, which kind of just eats you alive up, up the top of the rev range. But that makes this perfect for the streets. Like, you're pulling off from somewhere and you're ready to go straight away. You're switching lanes, just a quick downshift, and you're off, um, and it's not, violent, it's not unmanageable, it's just perfect. You don't have to be bashing limiter at 7,000 RPM to really be squeezing the power out of this. You can be at 3,000 RPM and just gently put your foot down. You're boosting. It's all good. You're already there, you know? Oh, and it sticks. It really sticks, you know? Unbelievable. Okay, this has a bigger front mount intercooler. It's got a boost controller. So the, the power's being turned up. It's definitely not stock. Um, uh, so my experience in this isn't gonna be one that you'd get from a stock VR4. And that takes me to my next point, the noise. Oh, a V6 engine. I'm gonna be completely honest. I was not a fan of how V6s sounded. They just had a tone that I wasn't a fan of. But this is a higher revving, smaller V6, so it doesn't have that kind of VQ 
trumpety noise that 370Zs or 350Zs or Holden Commodores come with. Um, and this has the benefit of added turbos. So that makes all the right noises. Now they're small turbos and it's running a stock airbox, so it's not loud, but you can still hear it spool. Um, and I believe this has a, a metal blow off valve from one of the other Evos, an Evo 8, I think. Um, so you can hear the pressure release, but it's not venting to atmosphere, so it's still fairly tame. Ideally, you go for one of those fun, fully venting to atmosphere blow off valves that make the big whoosh noise every time you let off. But I'm too nervous to run one of those. You need balls because if you pull up next to highway patrol and they hear you venting, that's an instant pullover and defect. And uh, I'm just not ready for that. And the thing about these cars is, I mentioned that the turbos are small and they spool up really quickly. Uh, what that means is you are always in boost basically um, and that means you're always going to be making those whoosh noises you can't just feather the throttle and get away with it like that but it sounds incredible it's not as loud as the integra but it is so much meaner uh, and it's so much more aggressive less mosquito and more uh, big hulk kind of situation so i'm a fan of that so to finish it off, this car is, in my opinion, incredible. You guys know how I feel about this thing, and for those of you who know me outside YouTube, you guys have heard me talk about Legnums and Gallants for a very long time. So to me, there's value in this car beyond just what it presents um, and the way it drives. It's got nostalgia attached to it. It's been in my mind since I was a kid, so it's different. Um, but every time I hop in this thing and take it for a drive, it just makes me feel so good. All in all, I'm over the moon. Uh, this car is so far, uh, with the very little experience I've had with it, incredible. Uh, as time goes on, I'm sure I'll fall in love with it more, but I will also discover its flaws and its little faults, um, as I did with the Integra. But I am looking forward to the journey that I'm going to have with this thing. For now, I'm enjoying it as it is. Uh, I'm just driving it a bit more, getting used to it, getting familiar with the power, and just taking it in. You know, the fact that I've got a car that I'm really proud of and I really love. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this. I will catch you on the next one. Say you bang. You say you've got them drugs, but I've never seen you slay.